Hey guys, Kenny Wisdom here, bringing you a set review of the new Breakthrough set. So, as always, we're going to take a look, <clears throat> go through these cards. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's too much in Breakthrough that's great, but, you know, there's always going to be a few things to check out. So, let's get started. I'm just going to roll through these in case anything catches my eye. Break. So I guess it's good to talk about the new break cards. Um, as you can see, they're sort of like level X's, same sort of mechanic. You can place them on top of an already existing Pokemon and they add new uh, HP, new attacks, new abilities, things like that. Unfortunately, I don't think any of the breaks in this set are very good. Uh, mostly talking about this one just to talk about the mechanic in general. I think that, you know, as with all of these kind of super rare gimmick cards like EX's or level X's or Primes, we're going to see good ones. You know, we're going to see ones that are playable eventually, but these ones I just don't think are it. Um, you know, I don't think any of the cards really shine. Additionally, I think that they're going to have to be pushed a little bit harder than the other cards. You know, people complain about a EX dominated, big basic dominated format, and I'm not sure that the way you fix that is by adding basically a stage three onto Chestnut. Um, so I think if we do see ones that are powerful, they're probably going to be stage ones. So, you know, they evolve from a stage one. Um, so they're, they kind of count as a stage two or their basics or something. Additionally, tricks with Archies and Maxis might help. But of the ones in this set, I don't think any of them are going to see a whole lot of play. Let's see, I have a Villian here. Great art on this Skidoo. Yeah, but unfortunately not a huge... I know that people have talked about this guy before, um, you know, I think that whenever there's kind of an interesting card like this that pops up, people want to try and break it, however, I don't think a stage 2 with relatively low hit points is going to really get anywhere, so don't think it's going to touch competitive play, however, it does, you know, really good art, um, has a pretty interesting effect, you know, Massive Eruption can be powerful, which is why I think people try and base decks around it, but not, not for me. Moving on. I do actually like the Starmie Deep Sea Swirl. Could be playable someday. Um, I don't think it's going to see play in the next form, this format or any of the next few, but being able to shuffle and draw um, seven and then kind of have a little bit of an attack that can uh, help out in the right situation is fine. Um, of course, it's a stage one, which is going to be its big downfall, but definitely a card to keep an eye on. It could... Um, could matter. Octillery, additionally, it's sort of like a magnetic draw from Electrode or Magnazone, just lets you draw cards until you have five. Again, maybe not something that sees play this format, although we did see some similar cards see play in the past. Uh, definitely something to keep the eye on, though. Clearly, the silliest looking Pokemon there is. Empoleon. So, this is the first card that I think actually could see some play. Um, I think. You're going to have to try and Maxis or Archies, or sorry, you're going to have to try and Archie this guy out, but, um, you know, just a way to boost your basic Pokemon's attacks. I could definitely see it trying to get there. Even 70 for 2 on a basic isn't terrible, but definitely the ability is going to be what you want to do. Haven't found a deck that this guy fits in yet, but um, I definitely think it could. You know, 20 permanent damage is very relevant, and people have worked harder to get that effect than just an Archies, so definitely something to... Keep in mind, going down the list here, Raichu break again. I don't think many of the breaks are too playable. Magnezone. So this is something that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, magnetic circuit, as often as you like during your turn, before your attack, you may attach a lightning energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So. Just kind of acts like a Blastoise or an Embor, but for Lightning types, um, definitely could see play. Um, the reason I'm not too hyped about it is because we only saw Blastoise be as dominant as it was at the World Championship this year into Regionals this year because of Archies. Magnazone does not have an Archies type card, meaning you'll have to evolve from your hand. Additionally, it doesn't have any kind of evolution help, doesn't have a Forest of Giant Plants or anything like that, so you'll be forced to evolve it manually and use Rare Candy. So... Uh, definitely a powerful effect, proving itself as one of the most powerful effects in the game, without a doubt, but I'm not sure that there's really a home for it yet. Raikou is another card that people try and 
play with the magnetism from what I can tell. Um, you know, as long as it has a lightning energy on it, we do that shining body ability, damage is going to be reduced by 20. You can put a bunch of lightning energy on in Thunderlands with it. Um, definitely a possibility in Standard. Uh, you know, those two cards, like I said, are powerful. This is basically a secret sword, um, but I'm just, it'll all depend on whether that Magna Zone can be set up legitimately or not. If it can, if the format's slow enough, then like I said, Rain Dance abilities are some of the most powerful in the game. But if it can't, they're going to have a pretty tough time. Uh, this is a Stunfish with Revenge that I kind of like. I don't think it'll see a whole lot of play, but I always like, I always keep my eye on Revenge type attacks just for weakness benefits. Um, you know, if you're playing against an Evil Tall EX, you can certainly Revenge it with this guy. Um, definitely something to keep your eye on as far as those kind of attacks go. Gengar. So Gengar, I think, is going to suffer from the same fate as Magnazone, where it has some powerful abilities, but um, being a stage 2, I'm just not sure if it's relevant enough yet. The one thing that I do like is we are seeing a trend that I think might not fully come to fruition for two or more years, but we are seeing a trend of stage 2s getting better and better, and I definitely think that we can see, we can get, in, get into a situation where maybe, you know, the... the Stage 2s get slightly better, the stage 1s, or the basics get slightly worse, breaks become better, and we're in a format where you want to play evolutions now. And that's when the cards like Gengar, Magnazone, the breaks, those all come into play because the cards are only not powerful enough because they're too slow, because they require evolution cards. But if everyone's playing with evolution cards, then Gengar, Magnazone, the breaks can definitely be where you want to be. Continuing on, Mewtwo EX. You're going to have to excuse me, there's like a hundred Mewtwo's in this set, I'm not sure which ones are which. Um, this one doesn't appear to be the good one. I know there's one, this one. So this one does 30 times the amount of psychic energy attached to this Pokemon. This is just the basic Mewtwo. Yeah, there's just so there's so many in this set. There's literally like all these different ones. Uh, the Megas. Oh no, this is the one. Okay. This Mega has. Sorry, I was looking for. I knew there. I knew roughly what all of them do, of course. But there's. Well, I knew there was one. I couldn't remember which it was that had the, kind of a better version of, um, X Ball, Psychic Infinity, ten plus thirty more damage, uh, times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So similar to X Ball, similar to Evil Ball. It's on a Mega. It only does ten with a base plus thirty though. Um, this card should be good. Uh. You know, Omega, we've seen Megas be good before, nothing, you know, Megas are definitely a setback to being good, because like I said, they're in Evolution, Evolutions aren't the most playable, but with an attack this powerful, it could be very, very good. The thing you have to think about is that Mewtwo was often good as a surprise, and with the Mega Mewtwo, you're not really going to be able to do that. However, I still think that an attack this powerful could uh, be very relevant and standard. I don't think we'll see the format warp itself around it like it did when the original Mewtwo X EX was released, but you certainly can't ignore the raw power level of a card like this. Um, we're going to go ahead, look through these, Chrysalia. I actually hadn't seen this card before, I don't think I must have, I must have missed it. Hmm. Not too powerful, but still kind of strange. Um, this card has been talked about a lot for its art. You can see the Cubone kind of sad, and there's a mom and holding the mom and stuff, and it's uh, uh, not really something I want to get into, but certainly a, a sad piece of artwork there. Marowak Break. Um, what else do we got here? Glade. So this is another card that... I've seen people use, um, just, you know, again, there is a stage two, so people are using it, they're maxing it out, and then they're able to, uh, premonition every turn, kind of rearrange, fix their draws, if they get, you know, a dead draw in the end of the game, standard has been, uh, kind of neutered by the loss of cards like Anon Colorus, so, you know, dead draws happen more often, you play a Birch, or, you know, you go to four, you play a Tierno, you draw some bad cards, this definitely can help. Sensitive Blade, uh, kind of a weird situation to be in, you have to be playing DCEs, really, you have to be playing Sporter Guard that turn, but hey, 130 for two is not, not bad at all, so this card, I think, 
Uh, we'll just need to find a home. I certainly think it's powerful enough. It just needs to find a home in a deck that wants to play a relatively low supporter account or always wants to be drawing good cards and um, hopefully is playing DCE and can fit maxis, which I think, they do, I think that card, sorry, that deck does exist. <sighs> Going through here. Great art on the Zora. This is kind of the Russian Zorark. You can, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch it with your active Pokemon. Um, Floatstone is returning to standard soon, so that'll be pretty big. Um, it's a stage one, so again, not as good as Keldeo, especially because the attack is not uh, as good as Keldeo's either. But if we, if you do have a deck that really needs that effect, I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't play a Zorark. Going through Mr. Mime. So Mr. Mime is one of the. I think this is the first in a in a series of pseudo reprints. Uh, so Mr. Mime is the same ability as the psychic type Mr. Mime from the Plasma Block, and there's also a Garbodor coming out that has the same ability but has a different attack. Uh, but it's still psychic type. So. Um, I, th I think we'll see this. I think that, you know, there's been a lot of reprints lately. They reprinted almost everything, and then now having pseudo-reprints, which I think is at least somewhat better. You know, it gives, lets you change it up a little bit. It's not the exact same card, even if it is functionally the same. Uh, you know, there is little key differences, which, you know, if they're going to reprint a bunch of cards, I'd rather not have them reprint anything, but if they're going to reprint a bunch of cards, I'd rather have them do it in slightly different ways. Uh, pink, you know, fairy type could be better or worse than Psychic type at times and could end up mattering. I don't see a reason why Mr. Mime wouldn't be playable as long as we have um, effects that are going to attack the bench. The other Mr. Mime was very playable at the right time, so I'm definitely going to get a one or two of these guys for standard. Looking through the rest. Forge's Break. Uh, like I said, not too much that's powerful in this set. At least it's immediately powerful. Um, this set and Ancient Origins have kind of had a few, you know, powerful, useful cards, but besides that, haven't really had the depth of other sets. This Dodrio is similar to a Dodrio from the Heart Gold Soul Silver block, had the same exact ability. Um, definitely a possibility, you know, Dodrio is just one of those cards that needs to find a home. I think it's certainly powerful enough if there's a card that needs to be constantly, or sorry, if there's a deck that needs to be constantly retreating, I don't see any reason why Dodrio couldn't slot in there just fine. Going through the colorless Pokemon. This Smeargle is actually really interesting to me. Um, I'm not sure exactly where the applications matter, but I will say that I do think this card is interesting enough and has enough combinations and things like Darkrai and Expand or Ho and Expanded that I do think this card will see play um, more play than people think, at least. I do think that it's definitely something interesting enough to mess around with. Um, some. Uh, again, I don't really know exactly where its home is yet, but I do think that Smeargle does have a place in both Expanded and Standard. Oh, looking through the rest of the set. Uh, Bridget, I don't think is going to see too much play because the Pokemon go directly onto your bench. So that's pretty unfortunate. Fisherman, reprint from the Heart Gold Soul Silver set. I think it's going to be great if there's an energy acceleration deck if that magnezone deck gets big you're probably going to want to play a fisherman um in most other things it's not going to be too playable but it's definitely one of those cards that has a home when it needs it floatstone we just talked about this guy amazing card uh reprint from the plasma block sets free retreat is amazing having it on a free retreat on a zorark or on a keldeo and expanded is amazing uh definitely one of the going to be one of the most played set uh, cards from this set Giovanni's Scheme. I actually really like this card. Um, I think that it's the one of the first real modal cards here that we have, and I think that both ends of the card are good enough to where uh, the card will see play. I don't expect it to be a four of. I don't expect it to be in every single you know deck out there, but I definitely expect you know if you want to add some damage, you have it. If you want to draw some cards, you have it. I expect this card to see more play than I think people are expecting at this point. Here's his here, Spirit Links. Heavy Ball, again, similar to Fisherman. Powerful card, has to be in the right deck. Totally think that there could be a deck for it. Just has to, you know, check the retreat cost on your Pokemon. 
uh, heavy boots. Is this the... Oh yeah, so this is just the, uh, the one that only has to go on big retreat, guys. It was not the card I was thinking of. Judge, reprint from the Heart Gold Soul Silver sets. Super powerful. I think it's going to be really powerful in control decks. Um, I think, again, with the worst supporters we have nowadays, it's going to be a reason to play this card. I think it's going to make cards like that. The Magnetic Draw card we saw earlier better. Um, definitely pick up a few of these. Pick up the old art if you can. Looks a little bit nicer, but definitely going to see play. There's Spirit Link from Mewtwo. Parallel City. All right, this might be the most talked about card of any card in the set. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a new mechanic where you it has two effects. So you have to choose which one you're doing. Um, and I think, you know, I'm not sure that either of these effects are powerful enough, but maybe they are. I could definitely see this card seeing play. Um... You know, you're limit, limiting your opponent to three bench. It is pretty powerful, even if you uh, don't, even if you don't get too much of a advantage from it. Just being able to limit your opponent to three is totally fine. Um, there are a lot of good stadiums out there right now, so I'm not sure how much play this will see, but definitely something to keep the eye on. Professor's Letter, um, already legal and standard. Great card, really. Uh, Really powerful, helps decks that are energy reliant. Skyla returning up. Uh, Skyla, I think in my testing so far has been kind of mediocre, but it is certainly good in the right decks. I uh, had a long history of seeing play in the past, and I'm sure that the right deck will come up again and it'll, it'll see play throughout its time in standard. Super Rod, great card. Uh, kind of a better version of all the like Sacred Ash and cards like that that we have out now. Getting fewer cards, but getting your choice. Excellent, excellent card. Town map, um, again, great in the right deck. Decks that really need to hit certain answers. Great card. Burning energy. We're really going to put the, the decks... It's really going to take people to evaluate the decks that are... Uh, the fire decks that are energy reliant. So if there's a fire Pokemon like Camerupt that requires a discard, and that's why it's not good, definitely check out this burning energy card, see if that makes it better. I think, in the case of Camerupt, I think... Maybe it does, but I definitely think there's more exciting things on the horizon for this card. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Rainbow Energy is back. Good card and decks that need it, like always. And I think that's it. I think we're just looking at the full arts now, which do look great. Um, a lot of, a lot of cool art in this set. These I actually don't like. I know a lot of people do, but I will go on the record as saying I don't like the art too much on these. I think they kind of look too much like fan art or something, you know, like something you'd see a kid drawing because they won't have all their favorite Pokemon in one. Uh, certainly cool, I guess, just not really for me. So that was your breakthrough set review again. A lot of cards in this set that I, th or sorry, not a lot of cards in this set that I think will have an impact, but a few that I think will have a big impact. Um, it just doesn't really have the depth of a set like Roaring Skies, maybe that had a bunch of good cards. This one just has, you know, a few that I think will make their mark. So my name is Kenny Wisdom. And thank you for watching.